Hello, everyone, and welcome to Majesty's Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and thank you for being here. Listen, quickly, um, the podcast or the episode for yesterday, I am so sorry. That freaking copyright thing, I kept trying to adjust it, adjust it, adjust it, and they... um, YouTube just kept going infringement, no block, 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 block. So I, in the last sort of thing that I, that I, that I, that I uploaded, I was like, ah, it's going to block it again. So I'm going to have to redo it. So, and then when it accepted it, I was like, oh crap, I think the sound and the, and the slides are off. But anyways, I, 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 I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, because I get obsessive compulsive about things being like I, I I spend time making sure like even music the beat match certain things and this this song goes to the anyways I'm I'm a little bit local local like that um, as you may see this is going to be a totally different podcast today I went to bed thinking things I dreamt about things and I woke up thinking things And I felt I needed to get it out. So, bear with me. I have no slides. I have no fancy nothing. I'm just going to talk. With the exception of, check out my portrait at the back there. Just got it revealed the other day. It's called Antoine in tomato sauce. Yes, that's what it's called. Antoine in tomato sauce. Now, does it, does it, does it look, familiar to any of you now now I, I i don't know how much charles paid for his but mine cost me lots lots and lots of tomato sauce <laughs> folks like what the heck hey eh? what an interesting um piece of art so i i saw it and i thought hmm I'm not going to say out loud what I thought. So, <laughs> but I'll say, hmm. Um, okay. So, you know, you know the good stuff. Um, if you're new around here, give us a chance. And uh, if by the end of this, you like what you heard, um, subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, maybe check another episode and maybe you'll like that one. I don't know. And also... Like, thumbs up, like, you know, like the content is important because it's part of the algorithm and um, comment. Like, I love reading your comments and your comments have been like just coming in. Bam, bam, bam. Having said that, though, the caveat is what? This channel is in support of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry, Princess Meghan, and... Everything in their ecosystem. So don't come to my channel and tell me all the stuff that you think I need to know about them. I don't. That's why I have my own channel. You go create your own. (laughs) Actually, don't. (laughs) We don't need more negative and nonsense out in the world. But listen, any comments that are rude, obnoxious, um, insulting, and all of that kind of stuff, bam, delete and gone. And actually, that's part of what I want to talk about today, because um, I've been getting a lot of a lot of you people all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, because it's been a, a little while now. You think you need to like come for me or educate me or say all the stuff about Harry and Meghan, especially Meghan. I can't believe that this one woman, this one woman, tiny, she, and she's actually tiny, can can trigger so many of you. I am telling you, man, I am telling you, you folks are so insecure, insecure, because, okay, I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop talking, and let me just, what else did I need to say, that's it, right, that's all I need to say, subscribe, um, thumbs up, comment, as long as it's good, and yeah, okay, let's get it on. (laughs) 
One of the things that I find so interesting is that I don't go out of my way by any chance to go on any podcast or websites or any sort of um, web pages, Twitter pages or any of that, that is in support of the royal family or is in support of, you know, Charles and, and, and Kate and, and William and all of that, right? That is, that's great. If, if that's, that's what they want to support, that, that's, that's their right. So I, I don't go, I don't, I don't comment, I, I don't, you know, e e even if by any chance I do end up on one of those sites, I, um, I, you know, that is their right to think what they think, and I don't comment on it at all. The interesting part for me is that people who is in support of the royal family and all of that, I'm just saying that these people actively comment on Sussex supporting um, channels. Uh, well, I, I, should, I shouldn't speak for um, the other channels, but I'll speak for mine. Uh, constantly, I get minimum, well, I'm not going to say how many, but... I get quite a lot, and I'm fascinated because it's all the same thing that they repeat over and over and over and over, and I wonder why, because my tendency would be if there's something that I don't like or someone I don't like, I just avoid them. I just don't, don't, don't look at any of their stuff, but these folks whether they're bots or real, are literally infested. Like, I, I know sometimes we make, make it funny or make a joke out of it that they are bigger fans than we are because they are so plugged in to everything that is happening. But I find it quite disturbing and quite um, psychologically damaging. So, you know, in... in in this age of, of instant information and pervasive media, public figures often face scrutiny and, and judgment. However, the vitriol directed at Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, now princess also, revealed deeper social undercurrents of bias, racism, and the unforgiving glare of a traditional institution struggling with change. And that is what I have found a lot of the comments that this channel gets is quite racist, extremely biased. And I mean, a lot of you know that at one point, I tried to engage and, 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 and give the person proof as they were asking questions, and they just kept coming up with more and more things. So, so, so what, what, what is the role of media and misinformation? We, we know what, what, what it is, right? The, the British tabloid have a long history of contentious relationship with the royal family. A saga marked vividly by the tragic story of Princess Diana. Despite the known history of media distortions, the cycle of aggressive scrutiny continues with Meghan Markle. Studies have shown that negative headlines are more likely to attract readers' attention and Megan's status as a biracial American actress makes her an easy target for sensational journalism. A, 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 a comparative analysis by The Guardian in, tw in, in, in 2020 reveal that Megan received significantly more negative press than, you know, uh, 
her sister-in-law, um, Kate, Mi Kate Middleton, um, highlighting an inherent bias in media representation. And, and we know that that, that, uh, that hasn't stopped, right? It has continued. If anything, it's gotten even worse. It's impossible to discuss the disparagement Megan faces without acknowledging the elements of uh, racism and xenophobia. Megan's entry into the British royal family was seen as a potential mod mo modernization and um, diversifying change, right, um, within within that family. Um, instead, her her presence seemed to exer ex exacerbate existing prejudices. Um, you know, there was a research done by the University of Bur Birmingham no noted that much of the criticism Megan faced is coded in language that, while not overly racist, aligns with stereotypes and negative sentiments historically associated with race and outsider status. The British social fabric, with its complex class and racial dynamics, plays a significant role in the in the dif differentiation or differential um, treatment she receives um, compared to the other other royals. Now there there is an element of of this narcissistic because they they love to call her oh she's a narcissist and 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 there there's a lot of projecting that that happens there right. Um, the royal family, with its <laughs> centuries-old traditions, represents more than just a family. It is a, in an institution that embodies certain values and cultural expectations. Critics argue that the institution's um, reluctance to adapt a more modern values of, of um, inclusivity and transparency can be seen as a form of institutional narcissism. This term used by psychologists refer to organizations that um, maintain their self-image by rejecting or uh, undermining those who appear different or who challenge the status quo. The harsh criticism Megan faces from within and outside the palace walls could be seen as protective reflex of the institution. Social media platforms have become arenas where individuals feel empowered to express opinions aggressively, often with an anonymity. I can't say that word, eh? Anonymity. Anonymity. Oh, hush walk. <laughs> you folks know what I mean. <laughs> The, the negative sentiment uh, um, towards, towards Megan often escalates into online harassment, which is magnified by the echo chambers by um, uh, the echo chambers of the internet, where hateful rhetoric can spiral unchecked. Uh, Dr. Karen Douglas, a professor of social psychology, notes that conspiracy theories and unfounded rumors about Megan tend to flourish in these spaces, fueled by confirmation bias and the human tendency to engage more intensely with content that aligns with one's pre-existing beliefs and prejudices. The <laughs> This sort of phenomena of, of hatred towards Meghan Markle is 
is not just about an individual. I think it's, it is systematic of a broader societal issue, including media influence, racial prejudice, resistance to institutional change, and the complexities of digital interaction. As a society, it is crucial to challenge the narratives presented by traditional and social media and to strive towards a more empathetic and informed discourse. Understanding why certain figures are targeted helps to um, reveal much about our culture um, and uh, societal weaknesses. And, 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 and it highlights the need for systematic change in how we consume and react to information about public figures. It's, 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 it's so interesting to me because, yes, I was watching a documentary um, last night and it was about Princess Diana. And I was amazed at how um, it was on one of these royal channels, but I was amazed at how the narrator in the documentary was painting a picture that was so negative. And they kind of had all these people, like these photographers and so on, that were like, oh, she's a manipulator. She can turn the charm on. Oh, she just pretended this and that. While they're like hunting her down, what, what, and part of the commentary that one of the photographers said, he, he sort of said, oh, you know, I was there and this whole thing with paparazzis and stuff really disturbed William. He didn't like it. Um, and she came to, to pick him up, I guess, at school, and he just walked by her car. And the, 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 the photographer, paparazzi person, he's like, yeah, I just stood there in 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 um, observing all of this and I can see her being upset and he was upset at her and you know and I'm thinking you're the problem but the way he was describing what was happening was as if he was um, this third party just kind of having an observation not not involved in what actually is happening like it it was fascinating. And it was fascinating how the narrator of the documentary, she kept saying things like, and she knew how to manipulate this and she knew how to manipulate that. And with her children, they, uh, it, it, okay, I'm not gonna do it. it was just quite amazing to listen to. And this documentary was done when she was alive. She was alive. I'm like, wow. And these people are hunting her down. Like, and then I saw another, um, I was watching this, 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 this person wrote an essay and she was talking about her essay on this other podcast. And she said, um, Harry wanted an out because he really did not you know, she, she looks at Spare as a whistleblower um, document. She goes, it's not really a biography or anything like that. It's a whistleblower um, document about the institution that its, it's sole purpose seems to be to just torture, right? And she said she, she attended an event where Harry and Meghan were there I guess to open something or whatever. And Megan was pregnant at a time with Archie. And she said, the minute Megan walked in, there was like not 40, not 50, like a hundred cameras plus. Just click, 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 click. And she just, she said she was just, because she had never experienced anything like that. She goes, I was just sort of like in 
amazement and in awe because these people have to tolerate this all the time. It's like these circus something and they come in and 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 she she said the the the, the British people have a and she she's British um, have a sick relationship with the monarchy that they build them up but they like tearing them down too and they always are looking for 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 which one should we abuse now which one should should we you know because to them it's like it's their savior but at the same time it's also the thing that 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 they can they they can project all of their worries all of their fantasies all of their whatever on it was quite fascinating but also um i remember uh, james o'brien had a really really great um analysis about he was talking about um the, the the British school system and being hit or beaten and he was also talking about the school he went to that you know came out that there was a lot of allegedly allegedly abuse um, happening in that um, institution and I'll 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 read you what I wrote here from from what he was saying. <laughs> Okay, so I found what I wrote um, on James O'Brien, and I'm going to try and make some sense of it because it's just kind of scribble, scribbled notes. Um, I did start it out writing like more comprehensive things, but there's some portions here that. Okay, anyways, let me just let me just start. Um, so. James O'Brien directly linked the corporal punishment and beatings he endured as a child at his boarding school to developing a lack of empathy and an overly aggressive survival personality as an adult. He, he explains that the trauma of those um, childhood beatings caused him to be in a constant state of defensiveness and in flight or fight uh, mode, always ready to attack um, verbally or, or overreact even to minor issues, O'Brien realized through therapy that he had built up and sort of like an, like an armor persona and abandoned his true self as a coping mechanism against the pain and humiliation of the abuse. O'Brien um, extrapolated that from his own experiences that many people, especially those who attend elite British boarding schools, developed similar dysfunctional defense mechanism from childhood trauma that became their um, entire way of relating to the world. He... he he believes this unresolved trauma and lack of empathy contributes to the combative nature of public discourse today, with people showing up unauthentically rather than seeking to understand each other. So in O'Brien's view, the harsh corporal punishment um, normalized in certain British institutions primed a generation to develop this armor personalities um, lacking in emotional intelligence and empathy towards others suffering. Do you did you get that right? Um, shaping societal attitudes and and um, and discourse. He argues that the beatings and violence he endured as a child at the boarding school caused him. Um, to, 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 to sort of stay in that survival mode, even in adulthood, adulthood, sorry. Um, he, he, he thinks that, that um, many people 
or 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 or, or most or, or almost everyone from from a similar privileged background who attend schools where corporal punishment was normalized likely develop com- com- um, comparable emotional um, stuntness, right? So there's no emotional emotional growth. There's no emo- intelligent emotional growth. And lack of empathy from having to repress um, their authentic feelings and humanity as a survival tactic against abuse. Like he... he ha- he gave this example where, where, where he said they were all, a bunch of them were like waiting to go into the, the headmaster office or whatever. And they were going to get like, you know, um, 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 hit. And he said they were all psyching themselves up because they're like, oh, it doesn't hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. It's, it's all fine. It doesn't hurt. So, 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 so they, they, they basically discount the pain. It's 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 quite fascinating because he's saying that okay let me finish what my what 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 I wrote here um, he believes this generational trauma and inability to be vulnerable or see from other perspectives shaped the combative public discourse and harsh treatment towards Meghan Markle he he. He, he sort of looks at it as these people, well, British people, they, they look at her as the outsider threatening tradition, right? Because also this sort of beating and hitting, all that, no, one, no one complains about it. It's, it's, it's tradition. These are, these, these are elite boarding schools. Oy. So... The, the 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 vicious attacks and 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 double standards he thinks that Megan has faced expose the lingering lack of emotional intelligence and empathy in certain sectors of British society shaped by an ethos of um, toughening up children through violence and humiliation. I thought that was brilliant, brilliant. Right, because if as a child you are being taught that the way you toughen up, you know, that up that 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 <laughs> stiff upper lip kind of thing, through violence and humiliation. I mean Charles the the king he, he even wrote about this when, when he went to his, his school and they used to humiliate him and make fun of him and, and, and all of that. Right? But again, and as Harry said in 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 spare, they're like, well, our our my wife had to go through certain this, and the other one, my mistress had to go through this, and blah 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 blah. What's so special about your wife or your girlfriend? Well, she's different. <laughs> so it was quite this. This was such a a, a sort of aha moment for me, right? Because. Thinking of it, the the majority of the people in media in the UK, the the editors and and the reporters and all of that, most of them, right? The majority of them come from well-off families, so probably a lot of them went to boarding schools, and that is why so many of them also, or so many people start to say, well, oh, why, 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 why couldn't, couldn't she just like, you know, just shut up and do what she was told or, or, or this or that? Like, what was so... And that's the thing that the other person that I watched um, that was talking about her essay that they were interviewing her, she, she said, um, you know, many people also looked at Diana the same way. Like, why can't she just like shut up and just stop causing trouble? And this whole thing of the normalization of, you know, it's expected that the king is going to have affairs or it's going to have like, or, you know, it's, it's quite fascinating in many ways because, you know, watching this stuff last night and, and 
you know what 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 I what I the notes I'd taken on James James O'Brien and watching the documentary and then watching the interview of this person who did um, wrote that essay, it was just sort of all coming together and I, <laughs> I kept thinking, you know, these people need like 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 I don't know, massive therapy sessions. Um it it is it is quite fascinating, right? Brian uh, O'Brien um it and in his analysis he said um the 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 roots of 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 the cruelty towards Megan can be traced back to the emotional um uh scaring and empathy um deficits caused by traumatic childhood experiences isn't that fascinating i mean what a statement emotional uh, I, I wrote this scaring i think I, I think i mean scarring <laughs> i look at my handwriting i say yeah emotional scarring sorry it's not not scaring emotional scarring Scarring to scar, yeah. The emotional scarring and empathy deficits caused by traumatic childhood experiences. <sighs> it would explain a lot. Um, and, and, and the culture keeps reinforcing it, right? Like this, we don't talk about certain things. We don't do this. We don't just, just take it. I, I, I find it, because I used to, I mean, I don't need to get into it, but... I, I used to love going to the UK. I went to the UK like maybe twice a year for like a while. And, you know, there, there, there are some occasions and stuff where I was like, okay, did that just happen? <laughs> right? But for the most part, like um, the friends I hang out with and people I knew, like I always had a great, a great time. But it's, it's, you know, when you just are able to see when 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 the veneer of of all that you know quote unquote politeness or or step of lip and all that kind of stuff sort of falls down you actually see what's happening because listen I was having a conversation with my dad the other day and I said to him I said dad so if I did this this and this would you disown me and my dad was like what the heck are you talking about and I said, well, you know, Prince Harry. And he's like, oh, man. He goes, that, that's just messed up. All that's just messed up. He goes, I, are you still doing that? Are you still doing that, all that stuff? I said, Dad, yes, I am. <laughs> he's like, all right. Um, he goes, do, do people actually listen to you? <laughs> I was like, Dad, yes. <laughs> I said, I have an opinion. I have a thought. Like, come on. But but his his point was, he said to me, he said, listen, you know, the role of parents. And sometimes my dad has these like really great insights and I'm like, are you really my father? <laughs> I'm joking. But he said, the role of a parent, um, gee, I don't want to mess it up. Um, the role of a parent is not to have the child live the life we expect them to live. So, So in other words, projecting right he goes the role of a parent is to guide and do everything possible for the child to become that which he or she um is destined to become so and i was like hey wait where where was my support when you know <laughs> like where was that dad when i was younger but um but but in all seriousness, he said, you know, he 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 couldn't understand, he could not understand King Charles. He said, you boys could do. He goes, don't 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 go do anything crazy, <laughs> right? He goes, but but you are my you you are my sons, you are my boys. You like, like I will always be there for you. He goes, I'll. You know, I'll talk your head off if you do something wrong or I'll I'll never let you like I said, I know, I know. Like he'll never let you live it down. He goes, But you're you're my children. And 
whether I agree with one or thing or the other, I will, the door is always open. So he finds the whole thing very, very strange and very odd and how having the power, the authority to change things that a father wouldn't. And then my dad said something that I thought was very um, insightful. He said, what, what do we expect, though? He said he couldn't even, like, he didn't defend his wife. He just let things happen just because he didn't care. He just seems very self-centered. And my dad made a comparison. He said, you know, maybe Harry is a new Diana. And I went, Dad, I'm like, maybe you should come on my podcast. He's like, yeah, right. I'm like, no, 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 honestly. I said, what? He's like, yeah. He's like, I said, I'm like, explain that a little bit more. <laughs> Demon mass. And he's like, no, like, 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 like you look at Harry and he's doing all these things that Diana used to do, right? And he goes like, he didn't care for Diana. He, he like, she was just like, I don't know, she, he thought she was just in his way. He couldn't get rid of her fast enough. And he said, the only explanation I can have for a father treating a son like that is that he honestly does not care about Harry. And when he sees Harry, he sees Diana. Just an obstacle. And I'm like, wow. Okay. Dad, here's your five dollars. <laughs> ah, this stuff with, with James Bryan, though, very, very insightful. I thought I, I, I might, I might develop that a little bit more, give it some more thought. But okay, this is it, folks. Um, I just got up and and had these things on my head and thought I will do something completely radical, not do anything fancy dancy and graphic wise or anything. Just talk, and um, that's it. So <laughs> I might do something fancy dancy and more graphic for later today. <laughs> um, take care of yourselves, okay? Bye for now.